The simple truth of the matter is that deadly force is only justified when there is objective, reasonable evidence of a deadly threat. Want to take your knowledge beyond the narrated videos? Join us on Active Self Protection Extra and subscribe for multiple videos every week to help you get better in your defensive skills. Hi everyone, this is John with today's Active Self Protection lesson out of Oklahoma City. Here we're going to see an officer involved incident that ends terribly for everyone in the incident. And we're going to learn important lessons here about the objective standard of a reasonable threat of deadly force. We're also going to learn about trusting what someone else might see when it's time to use deadly force and about using less lethal versus lethal means. Lots of news stories to read in this one in the description, but there is audio here as well. These officers have been called to a suicidal man and they're trying to corral him and get to see him. Let's listen in on the body cameras. This one doesn't end well, and then we'll come back and learn some lessons. Come here, man. Hey, put it down. Back up. Hey, back up. Hold on, Troy. Hey, I've got my hands. Hey, put your hands up. Put it down. Put, the, put it down. Put it down. Stop it. Troy, put the light fluid down. down. I will fucking shoot you. Get on the ground. Troy, put it down. Oh shit. Oh shit. 36 shots fired. The officer fired five shots there, and all five struck this man, and he did not make it. I want to go back and think about some lessons out of this one, friends. Honestly, I don't think this was a good shoot, and the officer that did the shooting is facing second-degree murder charges here. And I want to think about some significant lessons. The first one here, you see that our, our um, suicidal man has gone away from where the light was lighting him from the uh, car. And this is why a handheld light's so important. You can't necessarily point a gun at somebody, but you can always light them up with a handheld light. And this officer did have a handheld light, and I think that's very significant. Secondly, how many lumens do you want on your handheld light? You know, there's some discussion about how much is too much, and I tell you for myself, I will say that a light has too many lumens when it sets people on fire or has recoil, and more is better for more information to be able to see more. Another thing I want to talk about here now, he is actually being lit up by the officer who shot him by his pistol mounted light. And so you can see the guy with his hands in the air. Now, one thing that I want to see is the officer came in and there's three different guys making noises at him, three different guys telling him what to do, you know, put it down, put it down, whatever, and, and not people really giving one person the opportunity. Now, when the officer hits him with the beanbag here, if you go read the news story, the officer who's being charged with his murder uh, said that he didn't hear the beanbag shot go off. So this wasn't even sympathetic fire, but he saw his hands drop and he thought he was going for a knife. Friends, there's a lot of distance here and you have to have objective, reasonable evidence of a deadly threat in order to pull the trigger. And this officer here is going to have a heck of a hard time describing that kind of, you know, objective, reasonable threat to him or to people around him. Now, finally, when he gets in, I want to notice from a technical perspective, you see that the light goes off and uh, you, you notice that as he shoots, the light goes up. This is one thing with a pistol mounted light is that you got to have your recoil control on point because the light's going to come away from what you're lighting up so that you can see again what was going on. And then the officers here now have to figure out what the heck they're going to do. And that the right answer, of course, is to start first aid as fast as you possibly can once you get him in some cuffs. This is a very tough one, everyone, and I don't like the outcome here at all. We'll see how the trial plays out, but, you know, I, man, it sure looks bad for me on the video in terms of not having objective, reasonable evidence of a deadly threat to himself or to other people around him from those kind of distances. And when you don't have that, you're going to get charged whether you're an officer or not. So let's learn some lessons here from a technical perspective as well as from a moral and legal perspective so that we can do the right thing in that moment when deadly force is necessary or when it's not as we cover our ASP.